had heated up the place. Um, and that, of course, the temperature has significant, significant um, impact on, on, on the construction process itself. Um, another problem, of course, is that if you've got um, 14 days of sun and 14 days of night, if the, 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 the method of, of, of creating power is to have solar collectors, then you're going to go 14 days without any power at all. So some of the proposals are for establishing colonies around the polar situations where if you put a, a tower high up on the, into the a high enough tower up you can collect solar energy um, the whole time um, um, so and what is the reason why why would you want to use a robot such as this uh, to fabricate structures on the moon um, well the first the first main principle is is uh, the fact that it is too expensive to send material, building materials to the, to the moon. Uh, according to which estimate you, you, you follow, it's somewhere between $200,000 and $2 million to send a single brick to the moon. So it makes sense to... So the policy of NASA is... is uh, they have a policy called uh, ISRU, in situ resource utilization. In other words, use what is there, the boulders on the moon, uh, and in particular regolith and that's why Enrico Dini has been exploring the possibility of 3D printing with regolith and that's the reason why um, we've been exploring the possibility of, um, uh, of using regolith here um, having said that and of course it makes sense for a robot to do it um, because human beings should not only been there in kind of moments of um, to, 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 to oversee the technique it should be done either and you can't really do it remotely from earth because of the time lag, it's some two and a half seconds, so you can't really operate remotely from Earth, you have to be there to control it.